The June 18th explosion at Massey didn't just destroy Ship 36. It revealed SpaceX's most shocking secret. While everyone expected months of delays, SpaceX was already planning something that would make competitors panic. The accident became their fastest path to Starship Block 3. But here's the real shock. What they found in the wreckage changes everything we know about their timeline. This isn't just recovery, it's revolution. Let's dive right in. Here's what nobody saw coming. That devastating June 18th explosion at Massey wasn't just an accident. It was SpaceX's wake-up call that saved them from a much bigger disaster. While Ship 36 burned in the Texas sky, SpaceX engineers were already uncovering something that would shock even Elon Musk himself. The blast happened at exactly 7.23 p.m. during what should have been routine propellant loading. But here's the twist. The explosion pattern revealed structural flaws that ground tests had completely missed. Flaws that could have killed astronauts during actual flights. Within 48 hours, SpaceX made a decision that stunned the aerospace world. Instead of rebuilding Massey exactly as it was, they would use this disaster to leapfrog directly to Block 3 capabilities. But why was this explosion so valuable? And what did they discover in those twisted metal fragments? Here's where the story gets insane. While everyone mourned the loss of Ship 36, SpaceX engineers were celebrating. Why? Because that explosion had just performed the most expensive stress test in rocket history, and it revealed exactly what they needed to know. The blast wave, the debris pattern, every twisted beam told a story. The explosion had essentially run a destructive analysis that would have taken months to simulate. Each failed component provided crucial data about failure modes and stress concentrations that no computer model could predict. But here's the real shock. The explosion exposed weaknesses not just in Ship 36, but in their entire Block 2 design philosophy. The way the quick disconnect system failed, how the methane tank farm ruptured, the sequence of destruction, it all pointed to fundamental issues that would have cost billions in future failures. SpaceX realized they had just received the world's most expensive lesson in rocket engineering, and they weren't going to waste it. Industry experts predicted Massey wouldn't be operational until Christmas 2025. SpaceX had other plans. Teams worked around the clock, not just to repair damage, but to install completely new systems designed for vehicles that didn't even exist yet. The first sign of their ambitious plan appeared in early August. Two version three booster quick disconnects arrived at the facility. These weren't replacements. They were upgrades for Block 3 starships. But here's what nobody understood at the time. SpaceX was rebuilding Massey, not for current vehicles, but for the future. Why take such a massive risk? Because they had realized something terrifying. The explosion had shown them that their current approach was fundamentally flawed. They needed to skip an entire generation of development to avoid catastrophic failures down the line. While everyone focused on the destruction, SpaceX was quietly implementing their most important innovation, a complete elimination of Raptor quick disconnects. The new version 3 system uses separate connections for fuel and oxidizer, similar to Falcon 9's proven design. Think about it. Imagine trying to quickly disconnect 33 garden hoses under extreme pressure in freezing conditions with millimeter precision. That's what the old system required. The new design eliminates this nightmare entirely. But here's the secret weapon. This change alone could cut turnaround time from days to hours. The explosion forced SpaceX to rebuild anyway, so why not rebuild it better? The damaged Massey site became the perfect test bed for revolutionary improvements. This wasn't just an upgrade. It was a complete reimagination of how rockets could be serviced and reused. The real battle wasn't against time. It was against physics itself. The new cryogenic systems must handle propellants at minus 297 degrees Fahrenheit. At these temperatures, metals become brittle, seals fail catastrophically, and even tiny leaks can cause explosions. The explosion had revealed stress points that had been accumulating for months. Microfractures, thermal cycling damage, metal fatigue, problems that only become visible under extreme conditions. The blast had essentially performed a failure analysis that would have taken years to complete normally. 
The new cryogenic test stands incorporate lessons learned not just from the explosion, but from every static fire test ever conducted at Starbase. Advanced monitoring systems, improved insulation, redundant safety systems, each upgrade designed to prevent another June 18th disaster. But the most shocking discovery? The explosion revealed that their safety margins weren't just inadequate, they were dangerously wrong. Here's what SpaceX kept quiet about. The rebuilt test cage isn't just for structural testing. It's designed to validate the aerodynamic control systems that make Starship unique. The giant flaps that guide the vehicle through its belly flop maneuver. These flaps must withstand 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit during re-entry, then precisely control the vehicle's orientation for landing. The explosion had damaged the original test equipment, but the replacement is far more sophisticated. The new test cage can simulate not just launch forces, but the extreme conditions of re-entry and landing. It can test complete vehicle sections under loads that exceed anything experienced in actual flight. This capability didn't exist anywhere else in the world. But here's the real breakthrough. The explosion had shown them exactly what forces they needed to test for. The explosion also destroyed Massey's flame trench, revealing another hidden problem. Analysis of the debris showed that the acoustic energy from engine tests was causing structural damage that accumulated over time. The new flame trench incorporates design elements from their most advanced facilities, including water-cooled flame diverters and an improved acoustic suppression system. Why does this matter? Because Block 3 vehicles will test with up to nine Raptor 3 engines simultaneously. The acoustic energy from these tests could damage equipment hundreds of feet away. The explosion had taught them that their old acoustic calculations were completely wrong. The new flame trench channels this energy safely underground, while the water deluge system absorbs intense heat and sound. This wasn't just about protecting equipment. It was about protecting the future of the program itself. Remember those Christmas predictions? They were wrong by months. Recent activity suggests Massey could be operational for Block 3 testing as early as October 2025. SHIP 38's successful cryogenic proof test proved the basic systems are already functional. But here's the real shock. This rapid recovery demonstrates something profound about SpaceX's approach to failure. While other aerospace companies spend years investigating accidents, SpaceX turns disasters into opportunities within weeks. The explosion that should have delayed the program by months has instead accelerated it. They've leapfrogged directly to next-generation capabilities while their competitors are still analyzing what went wrong. This isn't just about rebuilding faster. It's about fundamentally changing how aerospace engineering approaches failure and recovery. The Massey explosion wasn't just about losing one test vehicle. It was about proving that SpaceX's entire approach to rapid iteration can overcome even catastrophic setbacks. But there's something even more significant happening here. The rebuilt Massey facility isn't just about testing Block 3 starships. It's about proving that SpaceX can rapidly rebuild critical infrastructure anywhere. On the moon. On Mars. Anywhere humans need to establish a presence in space. This capability to turn destruction into opportunity, to rebuild better and faster than anyone thought possible, might be SpaceX's most important innovation yet. Because when you're building a spacefaring civilization, the ability to recover from disasters isn't just useful. It's essential for survival. And SpaceX just proved they can do it better than anyone ever imagined possible. So here's what the Massey explosion really taught us. In space exploration, your biggest disasters can become your greatest breakthroughs. SpaceX didn't just rebuild a facility, they rebuilt their entire approach to testing, failure, and recovery. But this raises a bigger question. If SpaceX can turn a catastrophic explosion into their fastest development leap ever. What does that mean for the future of space exploration? When humans finally reach Mars and face inevitable disasters, will we have the same ability to adapt and overcome? The Massey recovery isn't just about rockets. It's about proving that humanity can bounce back from anything the universe throws at us. And that might be the most important lesson for becoming a spacefaring civilization. What other disasters in SpaceX's journey do you think actually accelerated their progress? And more importantly, are we ready for the challenges that await us among the stars? The next chapter of this story is already being written. 
The question is, will you be watching when it unfolds? SpaceX engineers were shocked when Booster 14 exploded mid-landing. But wait, they're actually celebrating. Here's why. That catastrophic failure just revealed the one thing that was killing every drone ship landing attempt. The solution? An insane 3-meter fuel tube buried deep in Block 3 that literally saved Super Heavy from certain death. But this tube doesn't just fix landings. It unlocks something way bigger that could change space travel forever. What secret capability does this fuel tube actually give SpaceX? Let's dive right in. May 27th, 2025, 4.47 p.m. Central Time. Booster 14 was screaming back to Earth at 360 kilometers per hour when the unthinkable happened. Radio silence, complete engine failure. Every engineer watching knew what came next a spectacular fireball in the Gulf of Mexico. But here's what nobody expected. SpaceX engineers weren't devastated. They were celebrating. Why? Because this catastrophic failure just handed them the exact data they needed to solve the most complex engineering puzzle in spaceflight history. You see, this wasn't just any landing attempt. SpaceX had deliberately pushed this 33-engine monster into what most engineers would call a suicide dive. A steep angle of attack so extreme that it defied every safety protocol in the book. But they had to know, could Super Heavy use aerodynamic drag to save fuel for drone ship landings? The answer came in the most violent way possible. Picture this. You're holding a massive water bottle while spinning it wildly. All that liquid slams against one side, creating chaos inside. Now imagine that water is 500,000 to 900,000 kilograms of ultra-cold rocket fuel, and that bottle is a 200-ton rocket flipping through the atmosphere at supersonic speeds. This is what engineers call propellant sloshing, and it's absolutely deadly. When Super Heavy tilts at that steep re-entry angle, the fuel gets thrown away from the engine intake points. Pressure drops instantly. And suddenly, your Raptor engines are starving for fuel at the worst possible moment. Each Raptor engine needs 7,000 kilograms of fuel per second to operate. Even a brief pressure drop from 300 bar down to 200 bar means ignition failure. Game over. That's exactly what killed Booster 14. But SpaceX engineers knew this failure was worth its weight in rocket fuel. Because hidden in that explosion was the blueprint for the most insane engineering breakthrough they'd ever attempt. Enter the fuel transfer tube, and calling it a tube is like calling the Empire State Building a stick. This engineering marvel spans nearly three meters across, that's wider than most highway lanes, and stretches 20 to 25 meters through the heart of Super Heavy. But here's where it gets crazy. This isn't just a pipe. It's essentially a high-pressure fuel command center built like a fortress inside a rocket that's already packed with 33 engines miles of wiring, and critical systems. The engineering tolerances are absolutely insane. Think about it. You're building a pressurized fuel reservoir that has to survive temperatures from minus 253 degrees Fahrenheit to over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Handle pressure loads that would crush a normal building and do it all while being lighter than the components it replaces. A single leak would mean instant death for the entire vehicle. But here's the genius part. This tube doesn't just store fuel, it acts as a fuel command center, drawing propellants from the main tanks and distributing them evenly to all 33 Raptor engines. Even when the rocket is tumbling through the air at one to two Gs of acceleration, this tube keeps the fuel flow steady and controlled. It's like the difference between trying to drink from a fire hose versus having a pressure regulator that gives you a perfect stream every time no matter how much chaos is happening around you. But wait, here's what's really shocking about this tube. SpaceX didn't build something this massive and complex just for drone ship landings. There's a bigger game being played here. This tube doesn't just solve the landing problem, it unlocks capabilities that could revolutionize how we think about space travel. With steady fuel flow under extreme conditions, Super Heavy can now perform maneuvers that were previously impossible. Rapid attitude changes, 
emergency engine relights, precision landings on moving targets. But here's the kicker that nobody's talking about. If this technology works for Super Heavy, what about Starship itself? Could we see similar fuel management systems in the upper stage? And what does this mean for missions to Mars where there's no Mechazilla Tower waiting to catch you? The implications are staggering. This isn't just about landing rockets. It's about unlocking the entire solar system. While everyone was watching those spectacular Mechazilla catches, SpaceX was quietly preparing for something much bigger. We're not talking about the relatively small platforms used for Falcon 9. We're talking about floating fortresses. These new drone ships need to be around 100 by 50 meters just to handle Super Heavy's massive size. They need reinforced landing pads capable of absorbing the impact of a 200-ton rocket, ultra-precise positioning systems that can hold station in rough seas, massive cranes that can secure and support both Super Heavy and Starship together. It's like building an aircraft carrier specifically designed to catch falling skyscrapers. But why go through all this trouble? Simple. Unlimited flexibility. Drone ships can be positioned anywhere along Starship's flight path, optimizing trajectories and saving fuel. They keep dangerous landings away from populated areas. Most importantly, they give SpaceX the ability to land Starship anywhere on Earth's oceans. But here's where it gets really interesting. Horizontal delivery systems. Once Starship lands vertically on the drone ship, SpaceX is developing mechanisms to gently tip the vehicle horizontal for transport. This isn't just about convenience. It's about protecting the vehicle from ocean swells and high winds during the journey back to port. Now here's what nobody's asking. If SpaceX is developing systems to handle Starship horizontally on ships, what else are they planning? Could we see floating launch platforms next? Mobile spaceports that can position themselves anywhere in the world's oceans? Remember those oil rigs SpaceX bought back in 2020? Phobos and Deimos, named after Mars moons. Everyone assumed that project died when SpaceX sold them in 2022. But what if it didn't? What if the real reason SpaceX abandoned those platforms wasn't because